the University of South Florida, in partnership with a sick body of alumni and fans, has initiated a new respectful campaign into promoting a higher level of pride, sportsmanship, and honor. Please welcome the players, coaches, and fans of our opponent with great respect and a local hospitality that is a hallmark of bowls everywhere. And now for the overhead door, start lineups. First, for the visiting UConn Huskies. Leading off the shortstop, number one, Anthony Potter. At second, the left fielder, number 27, John Topa. At third, the catcher, number 23, Zach Susi. At fourth, the designated hitter, number 26, Isaac Meltzai. At fifth, the first baseman, number 30, Tad. Phillips. Batting six, the center fielder, number three, Troy Stefanski. Batting seven, the second baseman, number four, Christian Petko. Batting eight, the third baseman, number 21, Connor Moriarty. Batting nine, the right fielder, number 13, Anthony Lucierno. And pitching for Utah, number 36, Tim Peek. The head coach for the Huskies is Tim Peathers. He's assisted by Jeff Morgan, Joshua McDonald, and Chris Pumizwan. Gentlemen, this time, we please ask you to rise and remove your hats for the play of our national anthem.
Dr. Schwartz and McCabe. At third base, Tom Rahan. At third base, Derek Goodhead. And behind the plate, Carlos Ray. It's a beautiful night in Tampa, where tonight the UConn Huskies and the USF Bulls start their 2018 American Conference Baseball slate. Welcome inside the broadcast booth alongside Kirsten Carbach. I'm Josh Appel. We have a fantastic pitching matchup for you tonight. A couple of lefties, both projected to go in the first round in June's Major League Baseball draft. Tim Kate for UConn, Shane McClanahan for USF. And Tim Cade for the UConn Huskies, the junior left-hander, as he pitches his curveball true at 12-6 break. That's going to be a pitch to look out for tonight for Shane McLanahan, a fastball that sits in the mid-90s. He leads the nation in strikeouts and in strikeouts per nine, averaging almost 17 Ks per nine in 2018. Tim Cade will have his hands full. He's kind of struggled this year, but he's going to have his hands full against this powerful USF offense. You see the numbers there. Tim Cape, 1 and 4 with a 4.85 ERA, 36 strikeouts, and 11 walks as we are underway. Shane McClanahan, the first lefty we see tonight, and he pumps in a 93 mile an hour fastball for strike one to Anthony Prado, second team freshman All American a season ago. McClanahan right back to work, and he's quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes. Get you both lineups in just a moment. Prado, the shortstop, leading off. He's batting 288. McClanahan coming off of an outstanding performance last Friday night against Army. A combined no-hitter, fourth ever no-hitter in USF history as he misses down low and outside. 97 on the gun there. It's a ball and two strikes. McClanahan making his sixth start. He's 3-1 and one with no ERA. He's the only starting pitcher in the nation yet to allow an earned run in 2018. 1-2 sails high, and he's missed with two in a row. I mentioned the range in his fastball velocity. Those first two offerings coming in at 93 to Anthony Prado, and once he had him two strikes, he's turned it up to 97 on his last two. 2-2 two, two in the dirt. McClanahan looks down at the mound. Didn't like his footing there, and now the count is full. Prado, no homers, three batted in. As the payoff is swung on and foul tipped in and out of the glove of Tyler Dietrich. And so to the payoff over again. When you face a guy like McClanahan Curse, and I know it's only the first batter in the game, but you want to extend him, make him throw more pitches than he has to. Make the game a little bit longer, maybe get him out pretty soon, or sooner I should say. And for McClanahan. As he gets a swing and a miss there on Prado, and the nation's leader in strikeout starts the game with one here, one down in the first. I guess he's had a lot of success early in the season, but I guess the only issue at times for him in his uh, collegiate career has been the walks. And at times he's got the pitch count piling up on him. So you're right for UConn. Uh, the best approach against him is going to be to see as many pitches as possible and to get him out of the game as quickly as they can. John Topa steps in and takes a fastball on the outside corner. It's nothing and one. Topa, one of the two team captains for Jim Pender's Huskies team. Pender's in his 15th year, coaching third. And as the head coach as well as the 0-1. Swing and a miss, took something off of it. There's that secondary stuff that we talk about a little bit in the open. A couple of pitches, a slider and a changeup that he's really worked on leading up into this season to really sharpen up. Quickly ahead, nothing and two on Topa, the pitch. Fastball low, one ball and two strikes. In that combined no-hitter, McClanahan and Carson Ragsdale combined to strike out 22 Army Black Knights a week ago. McClanahan with a career-high 15. Topa stays alive, sends that one out of play off to the right side. Eight game on base streak for John Topa. 302 average, a homer and 13 batted in. Zach Soucy is on deck. So 
One, two. McClanahan thought he had strike three. He must have missed low. And the count is square, two balls and two strikes. Trump point umpire tonight, Carlos Ray. Tom Brahan is down at first, and Darren Budon is at third. Two balls, two strikes. Called strike three inside corner. Now the previous pitch had just missed to below the strike zone. McClanahan coming back, painting the inside part of the plate with a fastball at 96, and he's got two strikeouts to start this ball game. Here's Zach Susie now. And before he digs in, let's set the defense for you. Left to right in the outfield, Kyle Phillips. Duke Stunkel Jr. is in center. Garrett Zek in right. David Villar and Coco Montez on the left side of the infield for the Bulls. And J.D. Dutka, Joe Denord at second and at first. Susie takes strike one. Tyler Dietrich, Shane McClanahan's battery mate tonight. McClanahan trying to retire the Huskies in order here in the first. Susie back in the lineup. He's missed the last two games. Uh, takes a half swing there, and he's behind nothing in two. McClanahan had a streak of 10 consecutive Ks in his start last Friday against Army. One of the more impressive pitching performances most might have seen if they were at that game. Here's the two-strike pitch. Missed off the plate outside. Plenty of scouts in attendance tonight. Tim Kate and Shane McClanahan, two of the best lefties in the country. And quite frankly, if you look around the, the slate of games all across America, I'm not sure you'll find as good of a matchup as the one we have here tonight. Yeah, if you like pitching, this is a place to be. Susie just gets one off the end of the bat here into the netting. Stays alive, one and two. And you're right. I think the section in front of us is about 80% filled with scouts out to watch these two lefties tonight. One ball and two strikes on Susie. There's that slider, chopped softly to Dutka at second. And he finish off, finishes off Susie, and it's a 1-2-3 top of the first for Shane McClanahan. Bulls coming to bat for the first time in a scoreless game on the American Digital Network. Yeah, the only, uh, that's the wrong sign -up sheet. All you have to do is write down your name, email, and the answer you get the Bulls will score their first one. Once you end up scoring, we'll show what the work. As we get set for the bottom of the first inning, let's look at the starting lineups for the USF Bulls coming to bat here against Tim Kate. It'll be Coco Montez to lead it off. He's the shortstop. Duke Stunkel Jr. in center field hits second with David Villar at third base batting at third. The designated hitter and cleanup man tonight for USF is Chris Chatfield. Joe Janord is over at first base batting fifth. Batting sixth at second base is J.D. Dutka. Kyle Phillips in left field will hit seventh. Garrett Zek is in right field batting eighth. And Tyler Dietrich handles the catching. Shane McClanahan, of course, on the hill. Worked to win two, three first inning with a couple of strikeouts for USF. And Tim Kate making his warm-up tosses now will face, as you said, Coco Montes to lead things off. And this is a potent USF lineup. If you go back to 2015, all these guys are in their third year now. That was a 2015 recruiting class for at the time head coach Mark Kingston that was ranked top 10 in the country. And now Billy Mole able to see the, the progress and basically the finished product for a lot of those kids as they are now in their junior years. Billy Mole, his first year as the head coach at USF, his team has won nine consecutive games. They're 16 and six at the start of conference play this year. Yeah, and you look up and down USF's lineup, what they've done in non-conference plays so far in 2018, seven of the nine batters in the order tonight are hitting over 300. And the guy due up third in this inning, David Villar at 392. He ranks third in the conference entering play tonight. This USF offense first in the American 
in batting average, slugging, on base, runs, hits, doubles, triples, and hit by pitches. One through nine, you've got dangerous guys. Really no easy outs. Well, yeah, even the two guys who are not hitting 300, uh, Kyle Phillips and Garrett Zeck, they're only hitting 290 and 297 respectively as well. So up and down the lineup, all of these guys can do some damage. And we'll see how they fare against Tim Kane as we talked a little bit about his curveball in the open. That is his key weapon. When hitters have had success against him, it's been against the fastball. Sixth start of the year for Tim Kate. A rough go of it. One and four, a 4.85 ERA. Opponents hitting 313 against him. 36 strikeouts and 29 and two thirds innings of work. So his strikeout totals are about where you'd expect. Back to back seasons with over 100. He's the first Husky to ever do that. So Coco Montez digs in. And he fouls the first pitch off. It's nothing in one. Montez working on three consecutive three hit games out of the leadoff spot for USF. It seems like he's finally found his comfort zone in this lineup, batted in all different spots, one through nine. There's that curveball, and it drops in for a strike. You know, an interesting stat that I found leading up to this game, and this is the third career start, make it the fourth career start for Kate against USF. He's 2-0, and oh, only allowed three earned runs in 21 innings against the Bulls. Montez able to lay off the curveball there. USF in those previous three starts against the curveball, batting 077. But against the fastball, 355. Interesting trend to see throughout this game how the Bulls attack those two pitches, whether they're able to lay off that curveball and sit on those and sit on the fastball. Montez on back-to-back -back pitch has done a good job of that. Yeah, he's thrown three consecutive curveballs to Coco Montez, and he, he's taken all three of them. One of them was a strike. Of course, the last two have missed outside the zone. The 2-2. That's low and in, and Montez has made the count full. Montez's average was as low as 222 at one point this season. That's up to 352. No homers, 11 batted in. Ah, the leadoff spot. Laid on a fastball here, and he fouls into the glove of Susie. And just like Shane McClanahan at the top of the first, Tim Kate starts out his night with a strikeout. Yeah, both of them uh, eerily similar at bats, actually, as uh, Shane McClanahan was ahead in the count, nothing and two, ended up running it full before he came back and got a strikeout on a fastball. And here Tim Kate does the same thing, gets it by him at 92 for the first out here on the first. Here's Duke Stunkel. He's laid on a fastball there. Nothing and one. Stunkel hitting 338, eight doubles this year. That's an area where USF has really thrived. Not only do they lead the conference in doubles with 66, that leads the nation. Curveball stayed high. One ball, one strike. 13 games with double digit hits. Eight games and double digit runs for this Bulls squad in non-conference play. 1-1 one, one at the letters. That's a strike. Kate's ahead one and two. David Villar on deck. Kate's one, two. There's that curveball, missed low and outside, and so far, USF hitters doing a nice job laying off of that pitch. You want to make him throw it for strikes. You don't want to help him out by fishing for one that's in the dirt. Stunkel climbs the ladder there for the fastball, and he's down on strikes. Back-to-back -back Ks for Kate here at the top of the first. Bottom yeah, of the first, I should say. Yeah, both of them have been on the fastball. Went to the elevated fastball here, and he gets the chase. Stunkel comes up empty, and back-to-back -back Ks for Tim Kate. And there is David Villar, third in the American in batting average this year. 392, 11 doubles, four homers, and 24 batted in. USF's team captain, 
Trying to start a two-out rally here with nobody on base. Swings through a fastball, and it's nothing in two. Well, he's thrown a curveball and a fastball and gotten ahead of Villar here two strikes. See if he goes back to that breaking ball here to put him away. Drops it on the outside corner. That is a thing of beauty. We told you it was going to be a fantastic night for pitching. Shane McClanahan and Tim Kate, both with a couple of strikeouts for McClanahan. And, of course, Kate striking out the Bulls in order here in the bottom of the first. Get another look at that curveball here that struck out Villar. Yeah, that's a, a beautiful pitch from uh, Tim Kate. And, uh, you know, his breaking ball has received very high praise, of course. That's the key element that makes him a potential first-round draft pick. And, in fact, head coach Jim Penders has said previously that Tim Kate has the best breaking ball that he has seen at the collegiate level in his career. That is some pretty high praise for the lefty. And it's saw a beautiful breaking ball there to put away David Villar. When you think about how long Jim Penders has been around, too. This is his 15th season as the head coach at UConn. But he's been a part of the program for basically the last, almost the last 30 years as a student athlete and assistant coach and now the head coach. And he's seen a lot of really nice players come through this program. The last big time lefty they had, Anthony Kay, was drafted in the first round by the Mets a couple of years ago. And that's such high praise of Tim Kate, you can see why not only did he pitch uh, for Team USA the last two summers, he's been in the Cape Cod, but you can see why there's so much attention on him heading into the draft this summer. Yeah, and you, you think of all the players that he must, must have seen, not only coming through UConn, which has been a pretty proficient program in producing professional and big league talent over the years, but all the guys that he's played against, and to say that Tim Kate's got the best breaking ball of them, that's a pretty, you know, big words for the lefty. And uh, we saw it there in the first inning. Shane McClanahan getting back to work. He got a couple of strikeouts as well in the first, both of them on his fastball. And you talk about Tim Kate's curveball. It's probably about as, how as lively as Shane McClanahan's fastball. Get up there at around 100. This one pumps in at 94, and it's nothing in one. And Isaac Feldstein who leads things off. He'll be followed by Thad Phillips and Troy Stefanski. Here in the second, Christian Fedko, Connor Moriarty, and Anthony New Serino round out the Huskies' order. One ball, one strike. This is the first hitter after the first, really, for McClanahan. He got ahead of each of the first three guys, nothing in two. Now one and one here on Feldstein. We saw that graphic just before McClanahan started this inning. Entered tonight with 30 and two-thirds scoreless innings. Hasn't allowed an earned run in his first five starts. Two and two now. Only pitcher in the country, obviously with the qualified stats, to have an ERA of zero. That's a pretty impressive run. I'd say so. Chop foul over to third. When you think of, of the game of baseball and just how, you know, a bounce here or a bounce there, a scoring decision here, a scoring decision there, can affect your earned run average. McClanahan has given up three unearned runs this season, including two in his only loss of the year against Fordham that Friday night of that series. The Bulls were one hit, count full. But no earned runs for the Bulls' left-hander. Yeah, and how about the fact that opponents are batting 118 against him? He hasn't given up more than four hits in any of his starts yet this season, and that includes a win on opening night against number six, North Carolina. Here's a fly ball to left center. Fairly well hit. Stunkel moving back. He looks up, and that ball's gone. Feldstein with his seventh home run of the season. And if you're a believer in the broadcaster's jinx, that's the first earned run of the year that Shane McClanahan has allowed. And UConn takes a one to nothing lead in the second. Well, Isaac Feldstein had seven home runs last year. He's matched that already. Got a hold of a 3-2 fastball from Shane McClanahan. And there you have it. First turned run against McClanahan this season. Here's Thad Phillips now. 
that sharpness that McClanahan had in the first, getting ahead of each of the first three, nothing and two, not here in the second. First pitch ball to Phillips. And he tomahawks this one well to left. That one, one hops the wall and will be extra bases. A double for Phillips, and he's in scoring position with nobody out. A home run and a double to start the top of the second for UConn, and Shane McClanahan in some trouble here. Well, both of them have been on elevated fastballs. The 3-2 to Feldstein got too much of the plates, and Feldstein made him pay for it. And this one, to Thad Phillips on a 1-0 pitch, that was up in the zone as well, and Phillips deposits it on the warning track and left for a double. Clanahan has his work cut out for him here in the second. Stefanski steps in on a five-game hitting streak. Hits in 12 of his last 13 games. 349 average. And has driven in nine and hit three home runs. The 1-0. Skied to center. Actually, that was the first pitch of the at-bat. That's caught by Stunkel. Phillips is tagging, but the throw is well up the line. And so Phillips goes second to third. And UConn has its second run standing 90 feet away, already up 1-0 here in the second. Bottom part of the order has struggled, though, to start this season for UConn. It's Christian Petko up now. He's batting 255, which is a decent average. But if you're McClanahan, uh, behind him, you've got Moriarty, who has a sub-200 average, and then Nusserino has only played in four games so far. He is facing the bottom of the order, but whatever a third one-out situation is McClanahan, a tough customer on the mound against him, and Tim Cade try to keep this a low-scoring game. Corners play in for Fedko. Trying to put something on the ground up the middle or a fly ball to the outfield to get this second run home. We know these games get more intense, especially when you get deeper into conference play. Swing and a miss there, and it's nothing in two. And it went off speed there again to Fedko. The first pitch to Stefanski was a breaking ball as well. After we saw those two fastballs hit pretty hard against him to start this inning. See what McClanahan goes with 0-2. It was the fastball, and he lines it into right center field. And UConn has a 2-0 lead in the top of the second. Another elevated fastball, Kirsten, and UConn has been able to take advantage of that in this inning. At the home run, the double. And now on a two-strike pitch to Christian Fedko, he gets a fastball that he can handle, serves it. Back in the right center field and picks up the RBI. And so here is Connor Moriarty. Moriarty checks in with a 140 average, but he's 0 for his last 19. You mentioned the drop off in the eight and nine hitters. O, a combined O for the last 32 for Moriarty and New Serino. A leadoff home run in this inning from Isaac Feldstein, his seventh of the year. A Thad Phillips double and a Fedco RBI single has made it 2 0. McClanahan just missed with the 0 1. Runner at first bluffs. And the 1-1 one, one is inside, 2-1. and one. Fastball there from McClanahan at 91. We'll see that fastball anywhere from 90 to 100 from McClanahan, and that's on purpose. You don't want to go max effort on every pitch. Maybe extend yourself a bit into games. 2-2, two -two, breaking ball, foul to the left side. Yeah, in the first inning, we saw it mostly uh, 93 to 96. He's hit as high as 97 today, but as you've seen, uh, he's taken a little bit off the last couple, coming in about 91. Think about it. It can benefit McClanahan in a couple of ways. Obviously, it helps him potentially go deeper into ball games, but... Think about how it keeps the hitters off balance. 
I mean, that's not even a changeup or his breaking ball. That's just his fastball coming in such a wide variety. 2-2. Two -two. Didn't miss by much. Well, it must have rolled. It was inside, but a very close pitch there from McClanahan on that 2-2 fastball to Moriarty. Here's the payoff, and it's down low, and he walks the number eight hitter. A rough inning for Shane McClanahan continues, and that'll draw a visit from his head coach and pitching coach, Billy Mole. Talk briefly about Billy Mole earlier. He's in his first year as head coach at USF, although his fourth as the pitching coach. This is his first year in 17 seasons, not in the same dugout as Mark Kingston. Those two go all the way back to their days at Tulane. Mole, of course, played, was a starting pitcher at Tulane, then was an assistant before following Mark Kingston to Illinois State. A great run there. Mole following Kingston here to USF, and Coach Kingston now the head coach at South Carolina in the SEC. And this pitching staff for Billy Mole has been so productive over his three-plus seasons. 500 strikeouts in 15 and 16. Set a program record last year with 620 on the season and the 10.1 strikeouts per nine led the nation tough spot here for McClanahan he's facing the number nine hitter Anthony New Serino starts him with a strike nothing in one somewhat unchartered territory this year for Shane McClanahan hasn't had to pitch in situations like this that much, if at all. And there's Reno playing in his fifth game of the season. And of his collegiate career, he's listed as a sophomore, but actually redshirted, did not play for UConn last year. A one, two, three, first for McClanahan. Struck out the first two he faced. But this inning has been a thorn in his side. Only one out, and two on. There's strike two. Fedco at second. He drove in Thad Phillips to make this game 2 0. Moriarty walked. He's at first. Time called. Now USF looking for a ground ball here. You've got the top of the order coming up next and some pretty solid hitters in Prado, Topa, and Susie at the top of the order for the UConn Huskies. But remember, a double play ball gets you out of this inning and limits it to just two runs and a deficit. This next pitch for McClanahan will be number 40 already. The payoff. That's outside, and that's ball four. Bases full of Huskies with one out here in the second. Now, really, uh, uh, the big thing, uh, the last couple of batters are the eight and nine hitters in the order, so the last thing you want to do if you're Shane McClanahan is issue them the free pass, and that's exactly what's happened. Moriarty drawing the walk. That was on a 3-2 pitch. New Serino also on a payoff pitch, draws the base on balls as well, and now he's got a spot to work out of McClanahan Working with the bases loaded, now the top of the order coming up. Prado is 0 for 1 with a strikeout, and he takes inside. Corners play in again for Billy Mole. Middle infield hoping for a ground ball to turn two. Two and 0. McClanahan not really missing by much on some of these. High fly ball left center. Phillips looking. And that's gone. A grand slam for Anthony Prado. And a six spot for the Huskies in the top of the second. And that is the First home run of the season for Anthony Prado. He got a 2-0 fastball over the middle of the plate. 
And he puts it over the wall. Another elevated fastball from McClanahan out over the plate. And Prado, a guy you don't necessarily expect to go deep. As you said, his first of the year went out to the deepest part of the ballpark to make it six to nothing. All McClanahan could do there was stand and watch. Now that 2-0 pitch over the heart of the plate, and that's the damage against him in this inning has been on that fastball up in the zone. And now a push bunt up the first baseline allows Topa to reach. And now the ninth man will come to bat in this inning with only one out. Susie 0 for one with a ground out to second. McClanahan hoping for another one of those to get himself out of this long inning. Six runs on five hits in the second for UConn. Two home runs in the inning. Started with an Isaac Feldstein solo shot. And the Prado Grand Slam. Second grand slam that UConn has hit this year. Time called. That bunt single extends John Topa's on base streak to nine in a row. 1-1 one, one check swing. Carlos Ray says he went around and it's Nothing in two, make it one and two. And McClanahan up over 30 pitches in this inning. There are 18 pitches in the first, but all's quiet right now in the USF bullpen as we work in the second. Runner goes on the one, two. It's low and outside the throw to second by Dietrich is not in time. Just a hair late and another runner in scoring position for UConn. Not a bad throw there from Dietrich, but it kind of hooked a bit back towards the shortstop side of the bag. And a close play there at second, but Topa picks up the stolen base. The 2-2. Two -two. Called strike three on the outside corner. Third strikeout for McClanahan. And now we're back to the guy who started it all off with a solo shot. But first, a look at that slider. Nothing really that Zussi could do there. So two outs now with a runner at second. Feldstein is homered in this inning. McClanahan hoping to get the better of him on the second go around. You know, what's interesting about this matchup, too, in McClanahan's start last season in stores against the Huskies, he actually broke Feldstein's bat with a fastball on the inside corner. A metal bat. Yeah, that's not something you see a whole lot in a college baseball. That's pretty tough to do. Sawed him off and then some. Tenth man to come to bat in the inning for UConn. Six runs. Change up there, swing and a miss, one and one. Feldstein with that home run to start this inning. Now with RBIs in eight of his last nine games. Topa at second. The 1-1 one -one is inside and low. USF has won nine straight games. UConn has won three straight. So one streak is going to come to a close tonight. I don't think anybody expected this. Three and one. Well, we opened the broadcast talking about the pitching matchup, and it's still a good matchup. These guys are both going to get a ton of attention in the draft this year, but uh, not exactly turning out how USF had hoped coming into this game. You saw McClanahan was electric in the first inning. Picking up a couple of strikeouts, some mid-90s fastballs in that frame, but it's been that pitch left up in the zone, and UConn's made him pay here in this second inning. Third walk of the inning for McClanahan. 
And Feldstein has been on base twice. Yeah, and the walks haven't helped. Most of the damage, obviously, as I said, has been done on fastballs left out. But then you look at Moriarty and New Serino drawing walks to load the bases in this inning. That's what set up that Anthony Prado grand slam. And now Feldstein taking the walk. As you said, the third of the inning that they've drawn against the USF lefty. So here's Thad Phillips, who doubled and scored earlier. First and second, two outs. Top of the second. First pitch is up high. One oh, way high and outside. The interesting thing about McClanahan, you, you'd expect when somebody gives up a six spot in one inning that the ERA is going to climb up there. And it has for McClanahan. But to 1.67, which shows you how impressive he was in his first five. The 2-0 is inside. That's his 42nd pitch of this inning. Phillips is the 11th man to come to bat. And he's behind Phillips 3-0. There's a strike. Phillips batting 444 with runners in scoring position this season. He's got one there right now. And the trail runner at first is Isaac Feldstein. 3 1 is over for a strike. USF will have Chatfield, Janord, and Dutka do up against Tim Kate in the bottom of the second. McClanahan hoping to end the top half right here. The runners will get a head start with two outs and the payoff pitch upcoming. There they go. Here's the pitch, and it's popped up in the center field. Playable for Duke Stunkel. And that finally ends the inning. Six runs on five hits for UConn at the top of the second. Bulls hoping to answer up next. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. There are other people just like you, driven determined those who use passion to spark creation others who are ready to unite and discover together it all starts with you it continues with us the university of south florida 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Chris Chatfield will lead things off for USF in the bottom of the second inning after UConn put up a six spot in the top half, highlighted by the grand slam from Anthony Prado. And Tim Kate pumps in a fastball for a strike to Chatfield. It's nothing in one. Well, Tim Kate's got to love what he sees on the scoreboard here. See Chris Chatfield's numbers, a 303 average. One homer and 11 batted in. He had 15 career homers coming into this year. As he ducks under a curveball. It's one and one. But a 40-plus pitch inning for Shane McClanahan, the Bulls' ace, giving up his six, first six earned runs of the season. Put it in perspective, UConn hit two home runs and had one double in the second inning. McClanahan had only given up one double 
That's the only extra base hit that he had allowed in his first five starts coming into tonight. 2-1 to Chatfield. He's able to lay off of that, and he's ahead 3-1. and one. Joe Janord, J.D. Dutka to follow. And if you're Tim Cape pitching with a 6 to nothing lead, all you want to do is just throw strikes and let your defense work behind you. Chatfield laid on a fastball, and the count runs full. Cape struck out the side of the first. Struck out a career-high 14 in his start against USF last year. Chatfield fouls that one into the netting to stay alive. It's a beautiful night here in Tampa. Temperatures dipping below 70 into the mid-60s. Not a single cloud in the sky and a great crowd on hand with the sweatshirts out. Some people have the blankets out. Yeah, it's a little chillier now, but you know, it's been an absolutely gorgeous day. Not sure where that pitch missed, but Chatfield draws a leadoff walk for USF in the bottom of the second. I think that was one of those scenarios where the catcher, having set up inside, had to move a little bit to his left to catch that. Threw off the umpire. Regardless, the Bulls have their first base runner against Tim Kate. And now here's Joe Janor, the reigning American Conference Player of the Week. He's upped his average to 345 after a 500 week. Homered in four straight games. Takes up high there. Drove in 11 and had three doubles. I've seen the numbers for Joe Janor this year. He's second in the conference in slugging percentage at 709. Tied for fifth in RBIs as well. He's got 19 runs batted in. He's ahead 2 0, and that's not even talking about the fact that he missed almost two weeks with an elbow injury. You see that bigger than normal elbow guard. In the Saturday game against North Carolina on opening weekend, Janord was hit by a pitch and ended up missing the next two series. It was also named the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association National Player of the Week after his incredible performance one week ago. There's a strike from Kate, and it's 3-1. and one. Still early in this one for USF. You don't have to get it all back in one inning, and especially against a guy like Tim Kate, you just want to try and keep the line moving, scratch across as many as you can, and just chip away at this 6-0 deficit. Big swing by Janor to the 3-1 fastball. Couldn't put a bat on it, and it's 3-2. and two. You know, if I'm not mistaken, in uh, the uh, opening weekend series, USF was facing quite a large deficit in their Sunday game. They actually ended up losing that game, but I think I want to say they erased like a seven-run deficit in that game. 3-2. Janord flies it foul off to the right side. They lost 9-8 to eight in extra innings to UNC in the, in the rubber game of that series. They were down 8-1. to one. In the last couple yeah, that of minutes. Yeah, that was late in the ball game, yeah. too. It, it must have been the seventh inning when they came back and tied it. A 3 2. Janord thought that was low. He pauses for a moment, but it's strike three called. All four outs for Tim Kate have been strikeouts. Yeah, close. Close pitches, uh, both to Chatfield on the walk, and now here you'll see that last one. Janora thought it was a bit down and inside, perhaps. But, yeah, good location there from Tim Kate, and he gets the backwards K. That's his fourth strikeout. So one out now, and J.D. Dutka digs in. Dutka batting 343, the junior college transfer. Look over at Chatfield at first. Chatfield a threat to run. He's three out of four this season. He walked to lead off the bottom of the second. Bulls still in search of their first hit against Tim Kate. If you're just joining us, six runs in the top of the second for UConn off of Shane McClanahan who hadn't allowed an earned run in his five previous starts, and the first, I guess. <laughs> 31 and two-thirds innings 
without giving up an earned run before the second. A grand slam from Anthony Prado, his first homer of the year, and an Isaac Feldstein solo shot. And meanwhile, Tim Kate here, through the first five batters that he's faced, there hasn't been a ball put in play against him. Four strikeouts, and then the leadoff walk. Let's put Chatfield at first in this inning. Well, for Kate, he had really struggled entering play tonight. Took a loss against St. John's last week. As Dutka slams one in the left center field, that's going to get down into the gap. Chatfield racing around second. He'll hold up at third. And it's a double for J.D. Dutka with one out in the bottom of the second. Nation leading 67th double as a team for USF for Dutka, his sixth. Dutka ahead in the count. Fastball up in the zone. And he puts it in the left center field to pick up the two base hit. Bulls for the chance to get some back here against Tim Kate down 6 0 early. Kyle Phillips digs in. He's driven in seven on the season, second and third, one out. Curveball for a strike, nothing and one. Well, again, we talked about how well the Bulls have done specifically against Tim Cates' fastball in his previous three career starts. Dutka doing a nice job driving that one for extra bases. It's the curveball that gives everyone fits. Cates working on a changeup, but won't throw it much. And talking to Billy Mole, just in scouting Tim Kate coming into tonight's game. Obviously familiar with the left-hander, but Coach Mole raved about the spin rate of Tim Kate's curveball. That's a nasty pitch. I'm sure if you talk to a lot of scouts that are in attendance tonight, they tell you it's probably major league ready right now. Just that one pitch. Yeah, he's going to need to develop a change up as a professional, but the curveball itself, you can certainly see that. Phillips takes a fastball, called strike three on the outer half. Another strikeout for Kate. That's five. Three straight have been looking. Yeah, and how about the fact that four of those five strikeouts have been on fastballs? That you'd, time he got Phillips out looking 91 miles per hour. You'd expect the opposite. I mean, if you're sitting on that curveball and you see that, I mean, what do you even do as a hitter? Here's Garrett Zek, last chance for the Bulls in this inning. Second and third, two outs. He takes down low. Zek turning in a nice season, his junior year, 297. Leads the conference in triples. Hit his first home run of the year last weekend against Army. One ball, one strike. The other thing to think about if you're USF, it's easy to say, you know, chip away, you have plenty of time. But when you have opportunities like they have in this inning, you got to get at least one. Yeah, that strikeout of Phillips was huge. Second and third, one out scenario. But it was a great pitch from Kate. Zach laid on a high fastball, and it's one and two. Chatfield at third, he led off with a walk. Dutka at second, he doubled. Nice take by Zek, throw behind Chatfield at third. And a dangerous play, luckily for Susie Moriarty able to catch that one on his backside. Chris Chatfield having a conversation with his third base coach, Chris Cates. Cates an All-American as a player at Louisville. Played professionally in the Twins organization as well. Two balls, two strikes on Zek. Curveball high. Just high. Countful. Didn't miss by a whole lot on that 2-2. Two -two.
feel like as a hitter, you're just hoping that one stays high when you know you're taking it. Big pitch here in the second. And Zek smashes one over and foul ground off the facing of the Bulls dugout. Came back with the fastball and the 3 2. We'll see if he goes to it again here. He has a couple of strikeouts looking in this inning, and both of them have been on the fastball. Payoff pitch one more time from Kate to Zek. Called strike three. There's that nasty curveball again. The Bulls do put two runners on base. They come up empty. All six outs for Tim Kate have been strikeouts. He has six through two and a six nothing lead heading to the third. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. There are other people just like you. Driven. Determined. Those who use passion to spark creation. Others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. Look at that, 65 degrees, a picture-perfect night to start the 2018 American Conference baseball schedule, along with Kirsten Carbach and Josh Appel. A six spot for UConn in the second inning. And again, Shane McClanahan has spotted Tim Kate, a sizable lead early on. That's McClanahan's first pitch of the third as Troy Stefanski is fouled out of play to the left side, nothing in one. Stefanski to be followed by Fedko, and Moriarty here in the third. Kirsten, after watching McClanahan struggle a bit in the second, really struggle for the first time this season, uncharted territory for him, what do you think he needs to do differently here in the third? I think he needs to find a way to regain his mental focus because uh, we saw him kind of get away from the fastball and also take velocity off of the fastball after it was hit hard early last inning. Phillips charging in from left. Montez going out from short, and it's Montez who squeezes that for the first out. And it's a challenge for him to bounce back after he's really struggled for the first time all season. A guy who's coming in having not allowed any earned runs and really hasn't been in too many difficult situations this year as he's been dominant in non-conference play. But now he's got some adversity to deal with after an inning in which UConn put up six runs against him, a couple of home runs in that frame. Here's Christian Fedko taking strike one. Fedko on an 0-2 pitch, lined a fastball from McClanahan to right center his first time to drive in the second run of the game. There's a warming up. The 1-1. McClanahan's ahead one and two, and something McClanahan did well in the one, two, three first as well, Kirsten, was able to get ahead of hitters. He got ahead 0-2 oh of each of the first three guys he faced, but he fell behind almost everybody in the second, yeah. save for two or three, and that I mean, he had three walks in the inning as well. Yeah, exactly, and he was behind Phillips before the double. It was a 3-2 pitch on the home run that started the rally. And that one not hit all that hard, but it finds its way into left for a one-out single. Fedko is two for two. 
And I think the most frustrating thing from McClanahan from that second, you look at the eight and nine hitters, no disrespect to either of them, but a 140 hitter and a 188 hitter, and he walked them both. And, of course, those two came around to score on the grand slam by Anthony Prado. Check swing and a called strike. UConn in the midst of its longest road trip of true road games in program history. They'll play 20 before their first game at home. Now the caveat to that is they had a home game scheduled last week against Yale that was canceled. The weather in the Northeast is very unpredictable, so not even sure if the yes. game that's supposed to snap the 20-game road trip is going to be played. It's got to be tough to try to get a baseball game in up uh, up north right now. The kind of weather they've been having over the last couple of weeks. And, you know, Major League Baseball season starts in a week. There are so many ballparks that I've seen on social media covered in snow. Two balls, two strikes. I think there might be some games snowed out early in the season. It's possible. Didn't that happen a few years back? Uh, yeah, it's definitely happened here uh, That there. was a very specific question. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely happened before, Re but... Really, really the, covered all my bases with that one. The kinds of storms <laughs> they've been getting the last couple of weeks, though. 2-2 two -two is popped foul off to the right. I think it was in Cleveland. That sounds right. Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to worry about snow tonight here, but... Maybe a sweatshirt and a blanket, perhaps. I think this is perfect baseball weather. Perfect weather in general. A little bit cool, but not too cold. Exactly. Maybe a sweatshirt. 2-2. Two -two. That's a nice pitch from McClanahan, and he has four strikeouts. Second out of the third. Still 6-0 UConn. And here's Anthony Nusserino. I went with the off speed there and catches Mori already looking. New Serino walked and scored on the Grand Slam his first time and flies this one foul off to the left side. McClanahan at 77 pitches. They're two and two thirds, and there's a lefty warming up in the bullpen for USF. It's Noah Yeager. Slider not so sharp there from McClanahan. One and one. Prado on deck. He had the grand slam. One one. Runner at first bluffs. Dietrich throws behind him. The tag from Janor not in time. Fedko able to get back with a head first dive. Two balls and a strike on the number nine hitter. And Fedko has one stolen base this year in two attempts. He did have a pretty good secondary lead. This one is smoked to right. Garrett Zeck takes a few steps back, and he's able to make the play. So a nice bounce back inning for Shane McClanahan. He allows the one-out single to Fedko, but strands him at first. It's 6-0 UConn going to the bottom of the third on the American Digital Network. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. There are other 
people just like you. Driven. Determined. Those who use passion to spark creation. Others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. Two innings for Tim Kate. He's got a 6-0 lead as we go into the bottom of the third. Kate has recorded six outs. They've all been strikeouts. Four of them looking. And he faces Tyler Dietrich, Coco Montez, and Duke Stunkel Jr. 9-1-2 and two in the Bulls order in the third. Josh Appel, Kirsten Carbach with you. Thanks so much for joining us on the American Digital Network as we kick off conference play in 2018. Bulls got their first hit of the night off of Kate in the second, a J.D. Dutka double. Put runners at second and third with one out, but they were unable to score. 0-1. Oh, That's a strike. He's quickly ahead of Dietrich, nothing in two. For Kate, his struggles coming into tonight primarily had to do with simple execution of his pitches, and I think he's corrected that tonight, at least through two and a third innings. Seven strikeouts. Wow, and Dietrich, the first two pitches of that at bat, both of them strikes, both of them were fastballs. He was down in the count, and he hadn't seen the breaking ball, and here it is. Tim Cade comes home with that 0-2 curve, a beautiful pitch, and no shot. So here's Montez, 0 for 1, with a strikeout. Letter high strike, 0 and 1. Again, this is the top offense in the American that Tim Cade is doing this against. Bulls came in hitting 301 as a team. UConn a solid offensive team. But I don't think anybody expected them to put up a six spot on Shane McClanahan at all, let alone a single inning. You probably won't see a team do that the rest of the year. Montez ahead two and one. You know, there's not been a whole lot of times tonight that Tim Kate has fallen behind in the count, but he did issue the walk in the second inning, and then that double from Dutka was also on a 2 1 pitch. Crowd not happy with that strike call. Montez takes an extra second to dig back in the box. Tim Kate really doesn't need any help the way he's throwing. His 2 2. Curveball chopped out the second. And it's dropped by Phillips at first. Fedco did a nice job getting over. And Phillips, just a lapse in concentration, allows Montez to reach with one out. Should be an E3. Yeah, throw was there from Fedco after a soft grounder on the bat of Montez. We'll see on the replay here on the curveball. Pushes it to the right side of the infield, but the throw just off of Phillips' gloves. So an error on the first baseman. Here's Stunkel. Laid on a fastball. Nothing in one. Stunkel also a strikeout victim in the first. He's 0 for 1. Tim Kate hoping to roll up a ground ball and get himself out of the inning. An error, by the way, on that ground ball. That was only the second ball put in play against Tim Kate tonight. The double, and then that one. Montez has done a nice job on the base pads this year. Four out of six. Not a guy in his first two years at USF that really ran all that much. An interesting note that I found coming in, and down 6 nothing, you're probably not going to see USF be as aggressive on the base paths, but no other team in the American Conference has been run on more than UConn. Teams have attempted 43 steals against the Huskies this season. 
Uncle just can't catch up to that fastball at that location. Same pitch he struck out on. And he swung and missed through it twice in this at bat, two and two. Kate struck him out with a high fastball in the first inning. And Stunkel goes down, swinging again on that curveball. Eight strikeouts for Kate through three, and he's only at 51 pitches. Another look at that curveball. Had a little bit of a sweeping motion moving towards the outside part of the play. Looked like it would have been a strike anyways. And he gets Dunkel down swinging for his eighth K tonight. That pitch has got to be so tough against a left-hander. Tough against anybody, but especially a lefty. Not too deceptive of a move there from Kate. Montes was already back on the bag before the throw was even to first. Villar pops it foul off to the right side. Villar with a 500 on base percentage entering tonight. 0 for 1, struck out looking to end the first. Again, Tim Kate has recorded eight outs tonight. They've all been strikeouts. Villar down the right field line. It's fair. Montez racing around second. And he'll be held up at third as Villar slides feet first with a double. It's a second hit tonight for USF. Both of them have been of the two base variety. Villar able to push that one the opposite way. It just keeps it fair down the right field line. Villar adds on to his league lead. Now 12 doubles on the year. And for the second consecutive inning, USF has runners at second and third. And an opportunity to cut into this six to nothing deficit. Chris Chatfield walked his first time. With one swing of the bat, he's capable of making this a three-run game. Busy night in the American, as you would expect, on the first night of conference play. Besides this one, the big matchup, number 18 East Carolina and number 23 UCF. They're tied at one in the bottom of the fifth. Tulane with a four spot in the bottom of the first against Cincinnati. They're up 4 nothing. Bottom two, Memphis and Houston scoreless. And the lone non-conference matchup tonight, Furman trailing Wichita State. The conference's new team this year, 2 nothing in the third. One ball, one strike on Chatfield. This UConn team always pesky once conference play starts. Won the league a couple of years ago. Played in the conference championship the year before that. That one didn't miss by much. And it seems like there's always a Tim Kate on Jim Pender's pitching rotation. A freshman Kate was in the same rotation as we mentioned him earlier, Anthony Kay, another crafty left-hander that dominated this league. Chatfield just missed that fastball, lines it back into the backstop. You just look at some of the success that Jim Penders has had in his 15 seasons at UConn. 
four NCAA tournaments. They made the Super Regionals in 2011 with a roster that included four players who've already reached the major leagues. We'll get you those names, and some you might recognize. George Springer, who just won a World Series with the Astros. Nick Ahmed, the shortstop for the Diamondbacks. Mike Olt with the Cubs. And Matt Barnes with the Red Sox. Chatfield grounds one sharply to second. Scooped up. And the throw to first that time is hung on to by Phillips. And the Bulls come up empty for the second straight inning, despite putting a couple in scoring position. Through three, it's 6-0. UConn, Kirsten Carbot will take over on the play-by-play -play when you come back. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. people just like you driven determined those who use passion to spark creation others who are ready to unite and discover together it all starts with you and continues with us the University of South Florida to nothing, the UConn Huskies lead the USF Bulls as Shane McClanahan back out there. Delivers the first pitch of cold strike to start off Anthony Prado. It's nothing and a one. Anthony Prado, a big part of that six-run rally in the second inning. Prado had a grand slam his last time up. Pitch down low makes it one ball and one strike. Shane McClanahan had a battle through 45 pitches in that second inning in which the Huskies put up six runs on five hits, two of which left the yard. This one's left in the air to center field. It's Stunkel, a couple steps to his right. He makes the catch. And Prado is retired for out number one to start the fourth inning. Alongside Josh Appel, I'm Kirsten Carbach. Thanks for joining us tonight on a beautiful yeah. evening in Tampa, Florida. John Topa, the batter. With one away here on the fourth, it's six to nothing. UConn Huskies leading. McClanahan deals the first pitch to Topa. Is hit foul off to the right, not a play for strike one. Matchup of a couple of premier lefties in the American Athletic Conference and really nationally, these two lefties both standouts for their respective teams. Tim Kate for UConn, a junior. Shane McClanahan, draft eligible sophomore. He's a redshirt sophomore. This breaking ball stays high, and it's one apiece. You know, McClanahan really has done a nice job since that second inning. He faced the retired UConn in order in the first with a couple of strikeouts, and that's what makes the second inning so puzzling. But he was falling behind hitters. He was leaving his fastball up in the zone. And one's away. He's behind Topa here. And, and at this level, it really doesn't matter how hard you throw. Division one players are going to catch up to it, and they're going to time it up. And because he was falling behind, he was relying on that fastball just to get it over for strikes. Foul ball off to the right. It's even two balls, two strikes on Topa. And I think for him, just getting through that inning, obviously, was such a struggle. And to see him bounce back last inning, he was able to get ahead a couple more times. And, you know, here so far, doing a nice job. They got Prado to fly out to center to start this inning. McClanahan's 2-2, two -two. swing and a miss, strike three. Nice breaking ball there from the lefty. And Topa, the second out. Mm -hmm. 
But I, I think the two big at bats in that second <laughs> inning, and we talked about it a little bit. Yeah, the, the home runs were obviously huge, but walking the eight and nine hitters and really letting the bottom third of the order get on base. You take a look at this slider from McClanahan dipping low and inside of the back knee. A beautiful pitch there for strikeout number five. Yeah, not surprising. A lot of strikeouts in this ball game. First one sent foul off to the left and out of play. Strike one on Zach Susi. Walks, sorry to cut you off. Walks are always a, a killer. But when you do it to guys who are struggling at the bottom of the order, set the table for guys at the top. That's exactly what happened with the grand slam. The bouncer on the ground fouled down the first base side. So McClanahan gets ahead of Susie here. Nothing in two is the count. Susie trying to get in on the action. He's 0 for 2 so far against McClanahan. A ground out to second and a strikeout. McClanahan trying for the 1 2 3 frame. So two tap back to the hill, gloved by McClanahan. He'll fire over to first to take care of Susie for out number three. So a one, two, three inning tossed by the USF lefty, but it's six to nothing. UConn leads the Bulls going to the bottom of the fourth. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. There are other people just like you. Driven. Determined. Those who use passion to spark creation. Others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. Rocky the Bull, the USF mascot. The Bulls coming to bat here on the bottom of the fourth inning. USF's trying to get something going against the lefty Tim Cade. He's been tough tonight. Cade already with eight strikeouts through his first three innings against USF, and his team has put up plenty of offense behind him. It's six to nothing, UConn, behind a couple of home runs in a six run second inning. Here's Joe Janord to lead off for USF. First pitch, fastball fouled off in the air to the right. And strike one on the Bulls' first baseman. And Janord 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Kate got him out looking on a fastball in the second inning. The one strike pitch from the lefty. Missed outside on a fastball. It's 1 and 1. Now Janora, a 345 average coming in to play tonight. Tied for third in the league in doubles. The 1-1. One, one. That's a cold strike. Another fastball there from Kate, and he's ahead of Janora. It's 1-2. and two. Bulls do have a couple of hits against him. A double from Dutka in the second inning. Two base hit from Villar in the third. Here comes the one, two. Breaking ball swung on a miss, strike three. Pitch was in the dirt, up with it. Susie will toss down to first to complete the K2-3. That is strikeout number nine for Tim K. So impressive what he was able to do through three and a third, but the pitch count, you gotta start looking at it now. It's at 65 here in the fourth. You know, I mentioned it earlier in regards to UConn's potential approach against Shane McClanahan, but the same thing applies here for USF to try to get the pitch count up against Tim Kate to get him out of the ball game early because you've got a lot more exper un inexperienced pitchers behind him. And when you look at the offerings in the UConn bullpen versus 
you know, what you're facing right now in the junior left-hander, Tim Cade, who's a potential first-rounder. First pitch missed to J.D. Dutka. It's 1-0 and with one out, and the base is empty. Well, certainly it goes without saying that you like your chances better with just anybody not named Tim Kate on the mound if you're USF. So the sooner you can get him out of this game, the better. And, like, there's really no positives to striking out nine times in three and a third other than the pitch count for the opposition is probably high. Ground ball through the left side, a base hit for Dudka. Well, Dudka's had no trouble with Kate today. He's two for two. I was just about to say the only one that's been able to figure him out so far is the junior college transfer who's found a nice spot in this Bulls order, batting in between Joe Janord and Kyle Phillips every game. He's become the everyday second baseman. He was splitting time with Alec Wisely at the start of the year, another Juco guy. Here's but that 2-0 pitch. Smacks it through the left side. Fastball up, was able to line it to left, but a good swing on it. Yeah, both times, Dutka has been able to get ahead in the count, get a fastball from Kate that he could handle, and he's got a double and now a single. He's at first with one out. Here's Kyle Phillips. Soft toss over to first base from Kate as he gets a check on Dutka. Dutka doesn't have a stolen base yet this year. He's been caught three times. Another move that way. Throw was low and dropped by Phillips. Phillips, one of the nine strikeouts for Tim Kate today. He's 0 for 1, the pitch. Swing and a miss. Elevated fastball there. It's a one strike count to start off the Bulls left fielder. Phillips, a junior from Orlando, Florida. Waiting the 0-1 pitch instead of snap throw down to first base. Quicker move that time, but once again, Duck is back in. Phillips transferred from Santa Fe Community College. So he's in his first season at the University of South Florida. Soft toss over to first base. Kate continuing to keep an eye on Dutko over at first. We've seen different variations of his pickoff move to first. I think the one before that was probably his best one. Now the 0-1. Curve stays high. 1-1 here on Phillips. Well, 14 pitches in the first, 29 in the second, 21 in the third for Tim Cade. He's had to work around a couple of base runners in the last two innings, but thus far he's held USF off the board as he takes a slow toss over to first base once again. Most of these pickoff attempts haven't had a whole lot on it. You see maybe one legitimate move over there to first base, but four or five tosses total. Dutka has not been going. He leads away from first. One and one once again here to Phillips in the pitch. Curveball up high, two and one. Talk about pitch count, Kate now over 70, but McClanahan on the other side is at 92. It, it'll be interesting to see if Billy Mole sends him out there for the top of the fifth or if he goes right to the bullpen and Noah Yeager, who's been warming up for the last couple of innings. Now the 2-1 pitch. Phillips lines it right field towards the corner. That's down for a base hit and more. Over to cut it off, New Serino into second. Goes Phillips, Dutka will stop at third. And again, the Bulls with multiple base runners here. Another chance to get on the board against Tim Kate. They'll have him at second and third with just one out. This is cr this is incredible how sometimes baseball works this way. In the second, the Bulls had a leadoff walk from Chris Chatfield. And then with one out, Joe George, or rather with nobody out, George struck out. And then Dutka followed that up with a double putting runner to second and third. Bulls weren't able to come through with putting the ball in play there and scoring the run. In the third, same thing. Second and third, this time with two outs after a double with one man on. Couldn't come through. Third consecutive inning, down 6 nothing with two runners in scoring position. You almost feel like this is a must-cash-in opportunity for USF. They have to get something here. Garrett Zek, the batter, first pinch. Fired high and wide with a fastball. It's 1-0. And if you're Tim Kate, you just kind of stick with what you've been doing in these situations the last couple of innings. 
But again, the Bulls right now just driving up this pitch count. And at this rate, I mean, can you see Tim Kate lasting past the sixth? He's at 75 right now. Well, they'll bring their whole infield in on this mound conference as a strikeout started this inning, but since then, J.D. Dudka singled through the left side and Kyle Phillips a double to right field to put him at second and third for USF with just one out. They have seen Kate fall behind the last two hitters that he's faced. And he is behind Zach here early in the count. It is 1-0. It's a meeting. is adjourned. And Kate will get back to work against the USF right fielder. There's something to keep an eye on here, depending on where the third base of Moriarty is playing. Garrett Zek certainly a candidate to drop down a bunt. Even though you'd like to see him swing the bat, he's certainly a candidate to bunt in this spot. 1-0 pitch. That's a cold strike. 89 miles per hour from the lefty. It's 1-1 one one now. I think it would be kind of surprising to see him try to bunt, though, just because it's a six-run deficit, so I think he'd probably be trying to play for the big inning. There's a 1-1. One one. Herve drops a little bit low. Zeus, he tried to frame it. But nothing doing. It's 2-1. Yeah, but at the same time, and I'm just playing devil's advocate here, but I think it's clear at this point he's not going to be bunting. But just to get something. If he could get the bunt down, the run's going to come into score most likely. See if Kate goes back to the fastball here. He is behind in the count. It's two and one. The pitch, that's high and away. It wasn't the fastball, but he missed. Three balls and a strike. And now I don't think he's bunting. No, I think it's pretty clear. <laughs> Pretty clear at this point, he's not. He's done it in situations like this before. That's why I had brought it up. A three and one, the counts. Zek ahead here. He awaits the pitch. And a miss down low, ball four. So Bowles will have the bases loaded. A single, a double, and now a walk. Sets him up for Tyler Dietrich. What an incredible season Tyler Dietrich is having. He's being asked to carry such a huge load. He's caught in every game this year. The one game he didn't start, he ended up finishing behind the plate because Joe Janord ended up getting hurt. And out of the nine spot this year, he's already driven in 23 runs. That's a career high. And a, a big hit here would do wonders for that USF dugout. For Tim Kate, you hope to just get a ground ball and get yourself out of the inning. Dietrich is 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Base is loaded for his pitch. It's lined into left field, hanging up for Topa. He'll make the squeeze, tack from third. Here comes Dutka down the line, and he will score. So it's a sacrifice fly for Tyler Dietrich. Bulls are on the board at 6-1 to UConn here in the fourth inning. That'll work. He hit the ball hard, just unfortunately for Dietrich, right at Topa. And if you're Tim Kate, right now with one out and the base is loaded heading into that at bat, your mind is on damage control. If you can't get a ground ball, at least limit the damage. And out there only scoring one run, now he can just focus on the hitter, even though there's still two guys on base. Well, Dietrich put a pretty good swing on it on that first offering from Kate. It's a right to Topa, but he does pick up the sacrifice fly. Other uh, runners stayed put there at first and second now with two outs. Top of the order now, it's Coco Montez. And the first pitch breaking ball bounced on the ground to short. Fielding two hops Prado. He'll toss it over to Fetco. The short route to get the force on Zach and retire the side in the fourth inning. Bulls do play one, though, against the UConn lefty. A run across on two hits, no errors, and two left on base through four complete. It's 6-1 to one, UConn. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students 
and 2.6 million alumni. Rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation. Others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. Four innings complete here in the American Athletic Conference opener. It's six to one as the Yukon Huskies Got six runs against the USF ace Shane McClanahan in the second inning. The first six earned runs that he has allowed all year. Remember, McClanahan had only surrendered three runs total, all of them unearned in non-conference play in 2018, entering play tonight. New pitcher on the hill for USF is lefty Noah Yeager. He's worked eight and two-thirds innings this year, reported 10 strikeouts, and he's been effective thus far for USF. He will face the middle of the order for the Huskies here in the fifth inning. Feldstein, Phillips, and Stefanski are due to bat. You want to talk about a, a change of pace from left-handers that you face in the same game. You go from McClanahan, who can get up there at 100 miles an hour, to Jaeger, who's more of a soft-tossing lefty. He'll try and hit his spots with his breaking ball and his changeup. His fastball is mid to high 80s, mostly in the mid 80s. He relies on balls put in play and his defense doing the work behind him. So Jaeger getting ready to go. He'll face Isaac Feldstein to start it off. And Feldstein came up twice in that six run second inning. Let off the frame with a solo home run against McClanahan on a 3-2 fastball that was left up in the, up in the zone. He then drew a five pitch walk against McClanahan also in the seconds as UConn sent 11 to the plate in that frame. So Jaeger on in relief as we begin the top of the fifth inning. Six runs on six hits and one error. Charge to UConn, one run, four hits, and no errors for the USF Bulls. First pitch from the new lefty is chopped on the ground. To shortstop, fielding high as Montez is throw to first. A little bit off the back, but Janord with the stretch. And time to get Feldstein for out number one. Communication is so important on a chopper like that to the left side, slowly hit. Montez, you could tell by how Villar reacted, called him off, fielded that on the backhand, needed a strong throw. Feldstein was getting on the line quickly. He threw a strike the first to get the out. Here's Tad Phillips now. One down and the base is empty. Jaeger deals, the first pitch fouled back. Offering came in at 86 from the lefty. Strike one on Phillips. Do you like that pause with the lead kick? that Jaeger just showed us? I did. Again, a different type of lefty than Shane McClanahan. This time he doesn't pause. The pitch, swing and a miss. Pulled the string on him. Had him way out in front. It's nothing in two. You've also got to love the mids he's wearing. The stirrups, but with the pants not rolled up. It's very old school. It's very 90s and 80s. Yeah, that's, a def that's definitely a different look. 0-2, hit in the air, foul, right side, then he'll get out of play. So we saw the the pause of the leg kick in the first pitch. There he went with the almost a slide step from the windup. He's going with three different deliveries in the last three offerings. Almost reminds you of Jamie Moyer a bit. Foul ball back our way, but it'll clear the press box to our right. Windows are pretty small, so I don't know if we're going to be getting a souvenir. No, we, we'd have to get the most lucky for one to end up in this booth. We almost got one uh, last week and actually a couple of weekends ago in a bunt in the other booth to our right. Doing radio. It's another 0-2. Misses down low on a breaking ball. One and two the count. For a, for a foul ball to get over the netting and also into one of these windows, it has to have the perfect backspin. We need a, a physics expert to, to figure that out for us. You know, I could see that happening on a bunt. Pitch was up high. It's two and two. 
It's possible. Maybe one day. Hesitation and the pitch. A little bit inside. So Phillips has worked his way back. He was down in the count two strikes. And now he's run it full here facing the new lefty Yeager. Went down in the base is empty. Phillips one for two with a double. Payoff pitch. Drops in for a called third strike. And Phillips is down looking for the second out. Good job by Yeager. Didn't miss by much on the pitch before that. But you'll see here the changeup drops in. And nothing Phillips could do. First strike out for Yeager, the sixth of the ball game for Bulls pitching. Here's Stefanski. And at the first one, a cold strike. Meanwhile, Tim Kate you know, struck out nine batters in his four innings in the start for UConn. Stefanski 0 for 2. A fly out and a pop out. Pitch misses up high from Jaeger, and it's 1 and 1. Well, Stefanski entering play today was batting 349. 17 games played, 16 starts for the Huskies. 1-1, one, one, fouled back into the screen. Stefanski now is senior from North Stonington, Connecticut. Ninth in the American and a hitting entering play tonight. 1-2 from Jaeger. Misses outside. The count squares 2-2. Two and two. Jaeger was ahead of Phillips, two strikes. Count ran full. They cut him down looking. It's 2-2 now on Stefanski to pitch and the dirt. So we'll have another full count. Stefanski, at least tonight, but it's really in the midst of a breakout season in his final year for UConn. He hit only 222 last year, but off to a really hot start in 2018. 3-2, fouled off. Pitch was a bit high. Stefanski fouls it back into the screen. Noah Yeager, the lefty. Sophomore from Davie, Florida. Three, two once again. It's popped in the air. Third base side, Villar is tracking it in foul territory and he drops it. He had room, but couldn't quite make the squeeze. So the at-bat will continue for Stefanski. We well, just hope for Noah Yeager's sake that he can come back and make a pitch here and, and retire Stefanski for the one, two, three inning. He had him there, obviously, and for Villar, who's been, for the most part this year, sure-handed at third base, just unable to come up with it there. It should be an error. They haven't put anything up on the board, but Villar was there. Just had a drop right off his glove. So three and two once again to Stefanski. Here's the pitch from Jaeger. It's lofted into right field just out of the reach of Dutka. That's down for a base hit. That first hit of the game for Stefanski. Of a two-out base runner for UConn. And Christian Fetko coming up. Oh, Fetko today out of the seventh spot of the order. He's two for two. A couple of singles against the starter, McClanahan. As Fetko digs in here against the new lefty, Jaeger. Jaeger in his first inning of relief. McClanahan, first pitch, sent back foul. Out of play for strike one. McClanahan's final line, by the way. Four innings, six hits, six earned, three walks, five strikeouts through 92 pitches and 54 for strikes. The first six earned runs he's allowed in six starts this season. One strike pitch to Fedko. Ground ball out to short. Waiting on him, Montez scoops it up, tosses over to Dutka at second to get the force on Stefanski and retire the side in the top of the fifth. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Halfway home in Tampa. 
Six to one, the Huskies lead. There are other people just like you. Driven. Determined. Those who use passion to spark creation. Others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you. It continues with us. The University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. David Villar do up third in this inning. Villar is going for two tonight, and he's third in the conference with a 392 average. A guy who's off to a tremendous start this year at the plate for USF. Yeah, Villar, you see that 392 average. He's also doubled tonight, led the conference with 11 coming in now with 12 on the year. And how about this with Duke Stunkel leading off? A switch hitter, but he hit lefty against Tim Kate in his first two at bats. So now in his third, he switches sides of the plate, maybe find some magic on the right side. And Villar actually do up second in this inning, not third, but he is batting third in the order. Oh, one pitch. Misses away. One of he's here on Stunkel. Well, Stunkel struck out twice tonight. Kate has gotten plenty of those. Nine Ks this evening in his first four innings. 1-1. One, one. That's down low. It's like how tips in Stunkel's favor. Two balls and a strike. Kirsten, something to keep an eye on. Tim Kate, 82 pitches. Some stirring starting to go on in the UConn bullpen in the bottom of the fifth. 2-1 on its way. Off the end of the bat, foul. Down the first base side, so it counts back even. Well, he did see a, a few base runners against him in that fourth inning. USF loaded the bases with one out after a Dutka single, a Phillips double, and then a walk to Zach. Dietrich swung at the first one and hit a sacrifice fly to left. It's accounted for the only run for the Bulls so far. It's curve it misses down low. Counts full here on Stunkel. Does look like UConn's about to get somebody up. We'll count here. It's the leadoff man of the fifth. 3 2. Swing and a miss strike three pitch in the dirt. Susie will pick it up, throw it down to first base to complete the strikeout. Stunkel has gone down swinging three times tonight. And that is 10 Ks for Tim Kate. Back to back seasons over 100 strikeouts. He's had 36. So far this year, coming into this outing. And he's been as good as advertised, even though he had struggled coming in. You knew what Tim Kate was capable of, and he's meeting those expectations here in game one of conference play. David Villar swings, skies one in the air, foul off to the right. That's out of play. We'll start him nothing in one. Uh, Tim Kate, first team all conference last year. He's the first Husky to post 100 or more strikeouts two years in a row. Ten tonight, including one of Villar in the first. Pitch misses down low. Villar did double his last time up. So can we spell Kate with a K? If you were making game notes, that's exactly what your heading would be, wouldn't it? Absolutely. The 1-1. One, one. 
Ground ball back up the middle. That squirts through in the center. Base hit for David Villar. He's got two hits tonight. One out base runner for the Bulls. 91 pitches for Tim Kane. How how long is the leash as you get a look at Villar again? Not trying to do too much. Drove it right up the middle on a pitch on the outer half. How long do you stick with Kate after he hits 100 pitches? I wouldn't think too much further. I know in college baseball, you'll often see their pitchers extended a little bit further than you would in the professional ranks in minor league baseball and even in major league baseball. There's pitch fouled straight back. Chris Chatfield's the batter. But on the other end of that, Tim Kane is the arm that you're really riding if you're the UConn Huskies this year. And this is only the start of conference play. There's a long way to go. And you need Tim Kate in there and healthy pitching for you every Friday night. A one. Nice bender in there for a strike. He's ahead of Chatfield 0-2. And I feel like the other thing, too, that's a great point. You, you want to have him later on, obviously. You don't want to overwork him now. But regardless of what, how Jim Penders feels about his bullpen, it's still a 6-1 game in the fifth. Any, for the most part, your bullpen should be able to close that one out. I know that Chatfield goes around there. I know that there's still a long way to go in this game. But if this were maybe a one or a two run game, maybe you see them stick with Kate for a little bit longer. But because it's a five run game, maybe you see the leash a little short. Yeah, I, I, I think that probably does lend to the decision as well because halfway through the ball game right now, it's not really a close game. It's still. It could be. One it, swing of the bat, it could be a three run game, but still. Yeah, but I think if it's a one-run ball game, it might lend you a little bit further towards wanting to extend Kate if it's very close. As Joe Janord takes a cold strike, it's nothing in one. So it might have something in leaning towards the bullpen it, since it is a five-run advantage. One-strike pitch. Curve in there for a cold strike. It's nothing in two. Now the butt strikes. The last two hitters as Tim Kate picked up his 11th K of the ball game against Chatfield. Two strikeouts in this inning. Sandwiched around the David Villar single. Villar's over at first. 0 2 here on Janord. And the pitch. Curveball bounced on the ground to third. Charging in Moriarty Fields. Off balance throw to first. Is in time to take care of Janord for out number three. So Tim Kate racks up two more strikeouts in the fifth inning. He is Kate 11. They're five complete here in Tampa. And it's UConn 6 and USF 1. There are other people just like you. Driven. Determined. Those who use passion to spark creation. Others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This a study break this is family this is home this is Yukon seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a power six conference known as the American 6-1 ball game as UConn atop USF Josh, there's a DJ on hand tonight. That's not something you see every day. No, creating an atmosphere here at USF. He's here every Friday night. Now, I have a question for you, uh, Kirsten. If you were a DJ, I need to know your, your DJ name. What would you go by? Oh, wow. You know, 
I have no idea. Nice. I kind of put you on the spot. DJ, I have there. no idea. Nice. I'd probably go DJ Bald Spot. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball there from Jaeger. It's nothing in two. So we've got DJ, I have no idea, and DJ Bald Spot with you. Yep. What a tandem. Really, it is. I mean, I know Ultras this weekend down in Miami. Surprised they haven't given us a call. Jaeger's 0 2 fought off foul. Straight back. Two strikes is the count here on Connor Moriarty, the number eight hitter in the UConn order. As we work here in the top of the sixth inning conference opener tonight from Tampa, Florida, as the Bulls host the Huskies. Matchup of a couple of talented lefties in the start today. Pitch low and away makes it one and two. Shane McClanahan touched up for six runs, all of which came in the second inning. McClanahan four innings in the start tonight for USF. Six hits, three walks, five strikeouts. Tim Kate, meanwhile, is through five innings for UConn. Pitch drops in for a called third strike on the breaking ball. Moriarty is out looking. That's the second K for Noah Yeager in relief. Now number one to start the sixth. And there is action in the UConn bullpen as Anthony Nusserino gets set to step in against Yeager. Be interesting to see if Tim Kate comes back out for the six. He is approaching 100 pitches. First pitch from Jaeger. Called strike on a fastball. Nothing in one. One away. Base is empty. Five run lead for the Huskies. Pitch misses down and outside. New Serino. Walked and scored in the second inning. He lined out his last time up. One one over the outer parts. Makes it one and two. It's Jacob Wallace, the right hander, warming up for UConn in the bullpen. We were told we were probably going to see him at some point tonight. One two. Outside that time. Counts even at two apiece. All of the damage done tonight for the Huskies in that second. Two home runs in the inning. 2-2. Two -two. Lift in the air to left center field. Phillips on the run. He's under it now. He makes the squeeze over from left to get New Serino for out number two. Well, the batter coming up next. Responsible for the big blow in that second oh. inning. A grand slam from Anthony Prado on a 2-0 pitch from McClanahan in the second. It is what lifted UConn to a six spot in that frame. First pitch here, lift in the air right field. Back goes Zek to the track. He has room, though, and brings it down for out number three. So Noah Yeager with two scoreless innings in relief. He's allowed just one hit. And on we play to the bottom of the sixth inning. UConn six, USF one. Do people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you continues with us the University of South Florida this is a classroom this is a lab this is a study break this is family this is home this is UConn. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. 
North American Athletic Conference opener. Thanks for joining us tonight. Alongside Josh Appel, I'm Kirsten Carbach. As the UConn Huskies out to a 6-1 lead, they played at six runs in the second inning against the USF starter Shane McClanahan. Tim Kate, meanwhile, the lefty in the start for the UConn Huskies. His day is done after five innings of work. And the new hurler on is Jacob Wallace, a right-hander to take over as we begin the home half of the sixth. Well, Tim Kate tonight racked up 11 strikeouts. You see him get a couple on the fastball. Those came in the first inning. Tim Cates utilized that pitch well and mixed in that beautiful breaking ball, the bread and butter pitch for Tim Cate. And he got a, quite a few of his Ks on strikeouts tonight. All told, he had 11 strikeouts in five innings of work, including a nice breaking ball there. They pick up a backwards K. He had 11 Ks allowed, just one run on five hits, two walks, and Kate exits after 97 pitches, 59 of them were for strikes. His team ahead 6-1 to one as Jacob Wallace takes over and work to J.D. Dutka will lead off the bottom of the six for the USF Bulls. Eighth appearance of the year for Wallace. No record, but a nice 1-8-0 ERA. Ten innings of work, five hits, two runs. Both were earned. He struck out 15, walked five, and opponents hitting 147 against the right-hander for UConn. First pitch was a fastball in 93, and called strike one on Dudka. Next one is line foul off the right side. On a 94-mile-per-hour heater. Pretty good velocity from the right-handed reliever. It's nothing in two. Well, Dutka has two hits tonight. He doubled to left center field in the second, singled through the left side, and scored the lone run for the Bulls. That came in the fourth. This one misses away. Susie was set up away. One and two is the count here on Dutka. It'll be followed by Kyle Phillips and Garrett Zack here in the sixth. One, two from Wallace in the dirt. Stopped by Susie. Some score updates from around the American. Rank matchup in Orlando, bottom of the seventh, UCF 23rd of the nation, up nine to one over number 18, East Carolina. 5-1 to lane on top of Cincinnati, top five. Ground ball out to short, two hops, Prado fields it. There was a strike to first, and Dudka retired for the first time tonight. There's out number one. Two nothing, Houston on top of Memphis, bottom of the fifth, and then at the top of the seventh, Lone non-conference matchup in the league tonight. Wichita State up 4-1 on Furman. Well, here it's 6-1 UConn. Huskies with six runs in that second inning. USF's run, meanwhile, came in the bottom of the fourth and a Tyler Dietrich sacrifice fly. Here's Kyle Phillips looking at the first pitch low. Both teams dipping into their bullpen fairly early tonight. Jacob Wall is on here to start the sixth inning. He got Dutka to ground out just short. Now his 1-0 pitch on the outer part of the plate. It's 1-1 one one on Phillips. Kyle Phillips struck out looking on a fastball against Cade in the second. He doubled to right field in the fourth. Looks at a 1-1, a little bit low. Two balls and a strike. Jacob Wall is a sophomore. Does have quite a few strikeouts, 12 of them in eight innings. Swing and a miss. The 2-1 fastball. It's even to Phillips, two apiece. A little bit of a breeze blowing out towards right. 2-2. Lifted towards left field. Tiptoeing toward the line, Topa pulls it down. And there is out number two. Well, they had him played. Phillips played perfectly. Topa, along with the rest of the outfield, was swung a bit for Phillips to go the opposite way. And Topa probably would have had a longer run if he was playing his normal spot and left because they had him shaded the right way. He was able to get there in plenty of time. Well, here's Garrett Zach. Zach a strikeout and a walk tonight. No bat with the bases empty and two gone. Swing and a miss at the first pitch fastball. Strike one. Well, 
Zach, the junior from Naples, Florida. Called strike on the outer part. A little breaking ball there from Wallace. And he's ahead nothing in two. Two strike pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three pitch in the dirt. And Susie will take it down to first base. They retire Zach and it's a one, two, three inning for Jacob Wallace. His first in relief of Tim Kane. A ground out, a fly out, and a strikeout. And we're through six completes. It's six to one. The Huskies lead the Bulls. There are other people just like you. Driven. Determined. Those who use passion to spark creation. Others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. one in the conference opener tonight alongside Josh Chappelle I'm Kirsten Carbox so glad you could join us here on a beautiful evening in Tampa temperature is a little bit cooler tonight six spot in the second inning for the Huskies they have led ever since it's six to one as the first pitch to John Topa this is down low as we begin inning number seven Well, Jaeger back out for his third inning at relief for the Bulls tonight. There's a liner towards the gap left center field. That's down. And Phillips will cut it off to his left to hold Topa to a single. Leadoff man is on for the Huskies to open the seventh. Bulls have Graham Hoffman warming up in the bullpen. We'll see how long Billy Mole elects to stick with Noah Jaeger, who's been very nice in relief. Yeah, he has. He's allowed two hits now. Had a single by Troy Stefanski in the fifth inning, and now a single from Topa to start the seventh. But those have been the only base runners against him. He's picked up a couple of strikeouts as he's out there in his third inning of relief. Here's Susie grounding the first one right side and through past the dive of Dutka. That's a base hit. Turning around second inning for third Topa. Here comes the throw from right, not in time. So Topa goes first to third on the single from Susie, and they're set up with the runners at the corners and nobody out. That was a risky move from Topa, but he didn't hesitate around second. Zek's throw just a little bit offline, allowing Topa to slide in around the tag, which unfortunately for David Villar, he wasn't able to make. Here's another look. Good job, Topa, too, to <laughs> make sure he wasn't hit by that ground ball. You see Zek, who has a really strong arm from right field. But again, just a bit too far up the line, allowing Topa to slide in safely. There's Isaac Feldstein now. And a solo home run to open the second. First and third for him. First pitch from Jaeger. This is outside. So back-to-back -back singles to start this inning. Setting up Feldstein. A home run, a walk, and a ground out to short this evening. 1-0 pitch, ground ball to third, snared by Valaro, throw to second for one, and there's no relay to first. That's all they'll get, but they do get the first out of the inning. I think Dutka thought that maybe Topa was going to take off from third, but 
I mean, when he received that ball, Topa wasn't anywhere. I mean, couldn't have been more than four or five feet off the bag. You got to try and turn two there. Would have been in plenty of time. Well, even if he is going, though. You could have a, potentially a shot at getting him at the plate, too. With <laughs> Interesting is the word I'll use there. Here's Todd Phillips. First and third one out now. As he looks at the first one away. A couple of singles. What goes down is a 5-4 fielder's choice. Susie forced out at second. Feldstein's now the runner at first. Topa still over at third. I guess the important thing there is they at least got one and kept the double play in order. 1-0. Upstairs. So Yeager's behind in the count 2-0. So if Yeager can roll up another one here, still have an opportunity to get out of the inning with a double play. And Phillips has not hit the ball on the ground yet tonight. He's got a double, a fly out to center. Struck out looking against Yeager in the fifth inning. 2-0 pitch, swing and a miss. And the off speed there from the lefty, 2-1. Sophomore ready to go, the 2-1 pitch, fired high. So a hitter's count here for Phillips. It's three balls and one strike. Nine hits up on the board for the Huskies. And they've got two on with one out. 3-1 pitch. And this is low, ball four, so the base is loaded now for UConn. And Troy Stefanski coming up. US, USF does have a right hand already. He's been loosening. It's a tough out here. Stefanski, one out of three today. Comes in, though, leading the team in average. And the lefty at the plate. Gives him a, a more favorable match, matchup to stay with Jaeger here. First pitch, swing and a miss. Jaeger trying to work out of his spot and keep the deficit at five for USF. By the way, we wouldn't be doing our due diligence if we didn't compliment the handlebar mustache uh, from Troy Stefanski. Or is that a Fu Manchu? It's a handlebar. Called strike on the outer part of the plate. It's nothing in two. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what a Fu Manchu is. Google it. Regardless, it, it is a majestic and incredible mustache that Troy Stefanski. It's a very throwback ball player. Two strikes to count, bases loaded. The pitch, swing and a miss, strike three. Put him away with the fastball. That's the. First strikeout of the inning and the third total for Noah Yeager tonight. And big K for the lefty there. Had him at 0 2. Comes home with an elevated fastball and he gets the swing and a miss from Stefanski. Bases remain loaded, but now with two gone. And Christian Fedko is the batter. Phone from Jaeger bounced on the ground, diving stop by the third baseman. Villari gets up, slings it to first in time to retire the side in the seven. So UConn loads them up, but they do not score. Huskies ahead, though, by five as we go to the bottom of the seven. Time to stretch from Tampa. And the American Conference Open. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation. 
others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is UConn. Some young fans on hand here tonight, enjoying some baseball on a Friday evening in Tampa. It's the American Conference opener. Oh my God, that kid a foul ball. This uh, this ballpark, one of the more fan friendly ones you'll find. The two berms down the right and left field line, perfect for little kids to run around and families to enjoy a baseball game. Tyler Dietrich to lead off. Jacob Wallace back out there in his second inning in relief of Tim Kate, the starter who went the first five for the Huskies. Swing and a miss at a first pitch fastball. To start off the Bulls catcher, nothing in one. The stadium, of course, is joined with the softball stadium here on the campus of the University of South Florida. Two strikes now on Dietrich. Softball opened up conference play as well. USF and UConn coincidentally playing in this complex. USF defeating UConn eight nothing earlier. Cold third strike on the 0-2 fastball. Dietrich's down looking. Second K for Jacob Wallace tonight. <laughs> So top of the order now, it's Coco Montez. Bulls have a run on five hits tonight. That run came in the fourth inning. Bases loaded, sack fly by Dietrich. Struck out looking to start this inning. First pitch is a strike to Montez. First two spots in the order have been quiet tonight against Kate, the starter. This is their first look at Wallace as he misses up high. It's one and one. Montez, 0 for 3, did reach base in the third inning. That was on an error by the first baseman, Thad Phillips. One one misses upstairs. It's two balls and a strike. Wallace has retired all four that he has faced since entering in relief. Two one, up high. It is behind Montez here. It's three balls and a strike. Three one swings and sends it in the air right side into foul territory goes New Cerrito, but he won't have a play. A ball clear the low wall and land on that burn. Three balls and two strikes. You know, Montez entered this game tonight 11 for his last 17. With four straight multi-hit games, including three consecutive three-hit performances. He's looking for his first hit tonight. Payoff pitch. Fly ball right side once again. New Serino on the run, and that ball will also find the berm. How to play down the right field line. The young fan that uh, we had on camera earlier, though, is down the left field line, so no um, chance yeah. at those souvenirs. So three and two once again. Wallace brings it home, and it's swung on a miss. Strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Jacob Wallace here in the seventh. There are two gone. Well, here is Stunkel, and he is going down swinging three times tonight. 
Kate struck out 11 in the start. Wallace has three in relief. First pitch, flown foul to the left. Out of play, strike one. Sunkel came in with a 338 average. And he lines with a third caught by Moriarty with a leaping grab. To Rob Stunkel of a hit. And end of the seventh inning. Three up, three down for Jacob Wallace. He's retired all six he's faced. Moriarty with a leaping grab at third. And take care of USF in the seventh inning. It's six to one, UConn leads. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us, the University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. Noah Yeager back out for his fourth inning in relief and back to take you through the final two. I'll turn it over to Josh Appel. Thanks, Kirsten. Connor Moriarty, who just made that web gem to end the bottom of the seventh, leads things off against Noah Yeager. The left-hander pauses, delivers home. Moriarty squares but pulls back for ball one. Moriarty is 0 for 2 today. A couple of strikeouts. He walked in the second and scored on the Anthony Prado Grand Slam. A six-run top of the second for UConn against Shane McClanahan, the only time the Huskies have been able to score today. 1-0. Strike on the inside corner, almost hit Moriarty, and it's 1-1. One one. Just an odd night for Shane McClanahan. 1-2-3 first inning with a couple of strikeouts, which you would expect from him. And in the second, faced 11 Huskies before finally getting out of the inning. Gave up two home runs, including the Grand Slam. Also gave up a double as well. Had entered tonight without giving up an earned run in his first five starts. Had only given up one extra base hit. But UConn pounced all over him in that second inning. But afterwards, was able to settle down. Two and two on Moriarty. In the third, allowed a one-out single, but struck out another. Didn't allow any other damage. And then in the fourth, worked a one-two-three inning with another strikeout. That's just an odd night for the Bulls' ace left-hander. This one grounded foul. Count stays two balls and two strikes. And USF just wasn't able to figure out Tim Kate. The only reason he exited the game, because of his pitch count. Ended at 97 pitches, and usually that happens when you strike out 11 in five innings of work. The 2-2 two -two from Yeager. Swing and a miss, strike three. Fourth strikeout for Yeager. He's tossed three and a third scoreless so far in relief of Shane McClanahan. A ton of strikeouts in this ball game. Nine now combined for the USF. Pitchers tonight. It's Jaeger gets a chase there for Moriarty. Pick up his fourth strikeout. 
Breaking ball for a strike on New Serino, who's 0 for 2, walked and scored in the second. And now for UConn's pitchers tonight, Tim Cave struck out 11 in the start, and Jacob Wallace has three in relief. Jaeger just missed off the outside. One ball, one strike. Well, you thought that if you're USF, all right, you see somebody else other than Tim Cape on the mound, you'd maybe start to have a little success. But Jacob Wallace just as impressive for the Huskies. 1-1 one, one misses in. And then you look at what happened at the end of the seventh. And if you're USF, that's just the kind of night it's been. For Duke Stunkel to sting a ball like that and Moriarty to make a spectacular leaping catch on a ball that was past him. <laughs> An impressive play. And for UConn, they've gotten the big hits when they needed them. They made the plays defensively as well. 3-1 and one here on New Serena. You know, we talked obviously a lot about the starting pitchers coming in, but you got to hand it to the relievers as well. Noah Yeager, we drawn some base runners in his last inning, but he's throwing the ball well in relief now in his fourth inning. Coming on after McClanahan. 3-1. Outside corner for a strike, 3-2. and two. Well, this Bull staff, second in the American in ERA, 2.71 entering the night. They were second in the conference in strikeouts and fourth in opponent batting average. Billy Mole staff putting up numbers like they normally do. 3-2 is popped up down the left field line and it will get out of play. And so, again, just an uncharacteristic night for the Bulls' ace left-hander, Shane McClanahan. But if you look at how he pitched last year in conference play, in his first full season coming off of Tommy John surgery, he struggled from time to time, but he was dominant in his first five starts this season, and it seemed like he had turned the page and matured a bit and had become almost a different pitcher. Jaeger just missed with that one. And it's a one-out walk to New Serino. He's on base for the second time. We're back to the top of the order, and Anthony Prado. And he's one for four. This is fifth plate appearance, but that one is a big one. A grand slam, his first home run of the season, back in the second. Flash you back to it here. The fastball up in the zone from McClanahan, and he drove it out to one of the deepest parts of the ballpark. Jaeger starts him out with a strike over the outer hat. Off the bat, almost didn't seem like he got all of it. Because you don't expect a guy with no home runs to square up a guy like McClanahan that well, but sure enough. And right now, had it not been for that grand slam, it's a one-run ball game. Runner at first, one out. Runner goes. It's a hit and run. Back to Jaeger, hesitated towards second. Takes the easy out at first, and there's two down. Score at one to three, and here's John Tope with the left fielder. A couple of hits for him tonight to go along with two strikeouts. USF will have Villar, Chatfield, and Janord do up in the bottom of the eighth. Serino at second. Strike on the outside corner from Jaeger, and it's 0-1. Topa extended his on-base streak to nine with his single in the second. This UConn team has won three straight games. They're 10-7 and seven on the year. The 10 wins, the most wins on the road. In the country, they're tied with Wagner for most road wins. We mentioned it earlier, too. The Huskies in the midst of their longest true road trip in program history. 20 straight true road games to open up the year. This is game 18 for them tonight. Jim Pender's team picked to finish second in the preseason poll in the American. The Bulls picked to finish fifth. And the 1-1 hits Topa. And he'll trot down to first with two away for Zach Susi, the catcher. The catcher, number 23, Zach Susi. 
Susi one for four. A couple of ground outs, a strikeout, and a single to right his last time. And his return to the lineup after missing the last couple of games. He also extended an on-base streak to nine tonight with that single in the seventh. They have the shift on him. Dutka playing a few feet out and right. Montez shaded up towards the middle. Everybody else, for the most part, in their normal spots, although Villar at third is a bit off the line and even with the bag. You see it there. Susie's first pitch swinging, and he skies it to left. Phillips charging in, calls off Montes, and he makes the catch to end the inning. Noah Yeager through four scoreless in relief for USF. Still 6-1 UConn heading to the bottom half of the eighth. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. Picture perfect night for baseball at USF. And for UConn, everything has gone right. They're up six to one with six outs to go. Villard Chatfield and Janora do up against Jacob Wallace, the second pitcher of the night for UConn. Tim Kate went the first five. It's been Jacob Wallace since. And he's been almost as impressive. Two hitless innings, no walks, and three strikeouts for Wallace. Yeah, Wallace with a fastball that's sitting in the low 90s. It's been 92, 93, and gotten three strikeouts, six up, six down for him. Villar tonight, two for three, a single, a double, and a strikeout. And he takes the first pitch wide. It's 1-0. Oh. Well, this USF hasn't been held in check like this all that often this year. We highlighted it. Early in the game, the top offense in the American, leading an average, extra base hits, runs, slugging, on base percentage, you name it. But credit to Tim Kate and Jacob Wallace tonight. Kate's exceptional streak against USF continues. He was 2-0. Coming into this one is Villar rips this deep to left field. That ball one hops the wall. Villar takes a big turn around first. He'll head into second with a leadoff double in the bottom of the eighth. His second two-bagger of the night. Well, Villar just keeps on swinging it. A guy whose average was pushing 400 entering play tonight. That's his third hit of the ball game. And Villar who already had a double and a single today. Gets a hold of one there, shoots it deep to left. One hops the wall and he's got himself another two base hit. His average back up over 400, it's at 410 after that double. So here's Chatfield, 0 for 2, is reached with a walk. Chatfield took a big swing. Swung through a fastball. It's 0 1.
Chatfield with seven extra base hits, making eight extra base hits of his own this season. It's seven home runs his freshman year, eight last year, but sitting on one this season, his junior year. And he's behind in the count, nothing in two. Villar at second, he just let off with a double. The 0-2, Chatfield fouls it back over our heads. 14 strikeouts tonight for UConn pitching. USF with eight. And it's not surprising to see the strikeout total so high for both teams considering these were the top two strikeout per nine inning teams one season ago. Nothing in two on Chatfield. 15 strikeouts for UConn pitching. Chatfield down on strikes for the second straight at bat. And here's Joe Janord. Janord's had a tough night. The reigning American Conference Player of the Week. Hit 500 over a five-game week. Heading into this series against the Huskies. And he swings at the first pitch and bloops it over second. And the second baseman, Fedko, able to range over there. Pitch in on the hands, and Janord couldn't muscle it into center. And just like that, two down for J.D. Dutkin. Now by the three the second baseman, number 44, J.D. Villar and Dutka have been the lone bright spots in this order for USF tonight. Dutka two for three, a single, a double, and he scored the only run. Two eighty six average with runners in scoring position this year, and he's looking for a clutch two out base hit as he lines this one to right center, and he'll get just that. Villar around third, he'll score easily as Dutka pulls up into second with an RBI double and the Bulls have made it a four-run game in the bottom of the eighth. That's a second double tonight and third hit for J.D. Dutka. As Dutka sends one deep to right center field to pick up the RBI as he knocks in David Villar. And, you know, between Villar and Zudka tonight, they've accounted for six of the USF Bulls hits. We talked earlier, USF in the Sunday game against UNC on opening weekend, able to come back from an eight to one deficit late. Down five here, now four after the Dutka double and Jim Penders comes out. He'll take Jacob Wallace from the game. Pitching change for the Huskies. We'll tell you who it is when you come back. We'll still threatening 6-2. They trail UConn in the bottom of the eighth on the American Digital Network. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us, the University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon.
7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Fifth-year senior Trevor Holmes, the new pitcher for UConn, the right-hander, 6'2", 234 pounds, replaces Jacob Wallace. Get to the numbers for Holmes this year. He's making his fifth appearance, 0-1 with a 5.40 ERA in six and two-thirds. He's given up four earned on five hits, struck out six and walked three. Rolls down 6-2 to the Huskies. And Kyle Phillips, the left-hander, takes a strike. Interesting with P.J. Pullen, the left-handed closer warming up in the bullpen for the Huskies. And a left-hander, Phillips, at the plate. Jim Penders goes with Holmes instead of Pullen. Dutka with an RBI double to drive in David Villar. He's at second. Phillips is even the count one and one. I think if the Bulls put up another, we're going to see the lefty. P.J. Pullen tops in the American and saves this year. And Holmes wants Max Susie, the catcher, Zach Susie rather, to go through the signs one more time. Honestly, I think once we get to the ninth, there's still a pretty good chance we're, we're going to see Pullen, whether it's a save situation or not. Phillips way back to right. Two-run game. That's Six to four, USF trails the Huskies in the bottom of the eighth on Kyle Phillips' second home run of the season. Now home run number two for Phillips, and he got all of it. The ball landed in the trees beyond the wall in right field. Take another look. You see the location on that pitch right around the belt middle part of the plate and Kyle Phillips jumped all over it and right on cue Holmes throws three pitches and his night is done and the left-hander PJ Pullen will enter the game for the Huskies hoping to close it out a three spot so far in the eighth for USF they've made it a ball game once again 6-4 they trail UConn another pitching change for Jim Penders 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us, the University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American.
Well, you knew the top offense in the American wasn't going to stay quiet for long. And with that in mind, after making it a 6-4 game, Jim Pender's not messing around. He turns to the conference leader and saves P.J. Poulin. Two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning. USF, after the Kyle Phillips two-run home run, is within two. They were down six to nothing after three and a half. And P.J. Poland is on for what Jim Henders hopes is a four-out save. Garrett Zek up for the Bulls with two outs and the bases empty. And the first pitch from the left-hander is outside for ball one. Get you Poulin's numbers in just a moment. He's behind 1-0 and on Zek. A low strike, and it's 1-1. One and one. Poulin is on for his ninth appearance. He's 2-0 and with a 3-5-5 ERA. Five saves. We mentioned that leads the American. 12 and two-thirds, 11 hits, five earned runs, 18 Ks to go along with nine walks and a 224 opponent batting average. One and two here on Zek. And a late time graded. Pullen looked like he was stepping back into his windup. Long look in, and now Poulin brings home the one-two to Zek. Called strike three outside corner, and Zek knew it right away. The Bulls do put up three runs, highlighted by the two-run homer by Kyle Phillips. 6-4, UConn hangs the ninth. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us, the University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. Kyle Phillips has drawn the Bulls within two. A two-run home run in the bottom of the eighth inning. A no-doubter to right field. Now we've got a ball game here in the top of the ninth inning. Noah Yeager back to work for USF in his fifth inning of relief. Now with the task of keeping this at just a two-run game. And now how important do all the zeros after the second look for McClanahan, Yeager, and the Bulls. Isaac Feldstein swings and misses at the first pitch. It's nothing in one. It's coming down to the bullpen here. We've got ourselves a ball game with USF putting up three runs in that eighth inning. All of a sudden, that lead has shrunk down to two. Tap foul at the plate and for USF in the bottom half of the ninth inning. They'll have Tyler Dietrich, who's driven in a run tonight, and at the top of the order against P.J. Poulin. Try and come back and tie it. But Noah Yeager has to keep it at a 6-4 deficit, 6-4 score, before we can start talking about that. He's off to a good start in the top of the ninth as he gets Feldstein swinging. Ninth strikeout for Bulls pitching tonight. Make it the 10th. That's the fifth for Yeager. A 
That'll bring up Thad Phillips. One for three with a double. Certainly the longest outing of the season for Noah Yeager. He had made four appearances prior, all in relief, and had thrown eight and two-thirds innings total across those four outings. Think about how valuable a guy like Noah Yeager is to have out of your bullpen because on Friday night of a series, of a three-game series, especially in conference, when your starter only goes four, to only have to use one guy out of your bullpen, and as effective as he's been, that's huge moving forward into Saturday and Sunday. Now, it really has because, uh, it, as you alluded to there, USF hasn't had to burn their bullpen despite the fact that their Friday night starter only lasted four innings tonight. Noah Yeager is taking them the rest of the way to this point. And you look back at that seventh inning when Yeager worked himself into a jam, first and third, nobody out, and put up a zero. Kept the game in reach for USF. As Phillips grounds one to center for his second hit of the night. He's aboard at first with one out for Troy Stefanski, the center fielder. Thad Phillips making his eighth start tonight. UConn six and one when he's in the lineup. And they're three outs away for making it seven and one, but he'll be pinch run for Chris Winkle. Normally the starter at first will go and pinch run. And now Billy Mole out of the first base dugout. There is a right-hander warming up. It's Richie Cruz, the side armor. It was Graham Hoffman earlier. Billy Mole has not made the signal to the bullpen just yet. One out and a runner at first at the top of the ninth. The Eggers at 71 pitches. It's almost like a start for him. You see Richie Cruz, who's had a fantastic season to for USF in his first year as a Bull. And while Billy Mole is talking with his pitcher, Noah Yeager, Jim Penders will talk with Stefanski. With a left-hander up, you'd think that this will be the last hitter that Yeager faces. Right-hander Fedko is on deck, but the lefty Stefanski hasn't had much success against Yeager. Struck out on three pitches his last time up. Does have the one single, though. Yeah, he line went over the second baseman Dudka for a base hit in the fifth inning. But remember, right before that, David Villar dropped a pop-up. That's true. A bat probably should not have continued as long as it did, but Stefanski took advantage. Ground ball gets Jaeger out of the inning. Pumps it a fastball for a strike, 0-1. Six runs, ten hits, one error, nine left on base for UConn. All six runs coming off Shane McClanahan in the second inning. Runner goes on the 0-1. It's a called strike. The throw to second is in time. Two gone. And Yeager a strike away from ending the inning. That throw from Tyler Dietrich right where you want it. As we'll see here, Winkle taking off for second. The throw on the money. And Winkle caught stealing. Jaeger tried to nibble at that outside corner but missed, and it's one and two. So now Jaeger has a chance here to get through five if he can retire Stefanski here, and he's ahead in the count. Missed away again. The right-hander Fedco on deck. Richie Cruz ready in the bullpen if need be. Fly ball to left. Kyle Phillips inning over. UConn three outs away from conference win number one. The Bulls will have Dietrich, Montez, and Stunkel do up in the bottom of the ninth. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni 
rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation. Others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. P.J. Poulin looking to add on to his conference leading save total. He's at five. He's three outs away from number six and giving his Yukon Huskies a 6-4 series opening win over USF. He'll have to go through with Tyler Dietrich, Coco Montes, and Duke Stunkel Jr. in the bottom of the ninth. USF is 14 and four in this ballpark this year, 16 and six on the season. Nine game win streak on the line for USF in the bottom of the ninth. PJ Poole, the lefty. This is low and outside for ball one. Dietrich tonight 0 for 2. A couple of strikeouts, and he's driven in a run with a sacrifice fly back in the fourth. Swing and a miss. Good life on that fastball. 89, it's 1 and 1. Pulling the third man out of the bullpen for UConn. Tim Kate went the first five. Dietrich behind in the count, one and two. Kate in line for the win. Five innings, five hits, an earned run. He struck out 11 and walked two. Dietrich gets under it to center. Prado and Fedko, and it's Prado who calls off Fedko to make the catch. Michael Woodworth has actually entered the game. He's now at second for UConn. One out base is empty. And here is Coco Montes, the top of the order up now for the Bulls. Chris Winkle pinch ran for Thad Phillips, so he's now in the game at first base in Phillips' place as well. Montes, hitless on the night. Has reached twice, though, on a fielder's choice and an error. Two Ks as well. 16 strikeouts for UConn pitching. 10 for USF. Shane McClanahan in line for the loss. A tough night for him. Gave up six runs. They all came in the second on five hits. Gave up six total in the game over his four innings of work. Three walks, five strikeouts as well. UConn has won three in a row. Trying to make it four straight and open the conference slate 1-0. and oh. Montez reaches. It'll bring the tying run to the plate. It's represented by Duke Stunkel. And they've got the right part of the order coming up after these two. Well, our Chatfield and Janor, it's just about getting to those guys. If you're pooling, you want to make this quick and easy. Montes draws a walk. He's on for the third time, and the tying run is at the plate for USF. The Bulls are down 6-1 to one with two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Well, Stunkel coming up, he's had a tough night at the plate, but he did hit the ball on the line his last time up. It was robbed by Connor Moriarty making that leaping grab at third to end the seventh inning. Batting right-handed again. 
Montez a short lead at first. Stunkel chops one to second, could be two. Woodworth to second for one, the turn to first. In time, ball game over. UConn takes game one of the series on a 4-6-3 double play. What a turn there by the Huskies middle infield. Yeah, it was not an easy ball to turn two on. It was a bounder out towards second base. Woodward, Woodworth rather shoveled it over to Prado to get one. A close play back at first base with Stunkel electing to go into the dive to try to beat it. A bang bang play over there at first, but they turn the twin killing. And UConn picks up the win in the conference opener. We'll be back with more after these messages. UConn takes game one, six to four. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is UConn. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Welcome back to the USF Baseball Stadium, your final in game one of this three-game series, the UConn Huskies six and the USF Bulls four. The Huskies extend their winning streak to four. They improve to 11 and seven on the year for USF. Their winning streak comes to a close at nine in a row. Their record 16 and seven on the year. Tim Kate gets the win, five innings, five hits, just one earned run. He walked two and struck out an impressive 11 over his five innings of work. Shane McClanahan takes the loss. He falls to three and two. Four innings, six hits, six runs all earned. He walked three and struck out five. And P.J. Poulin, a hitless inning in a third, walked one, struck out one. He earns his sixth save of the year. First pitch was at 7 o'clock. The last out recorded at 9.55. A two-hour and 55-minute ball game that really had its entertaining points come in spurts. Obviously, the six-inning, second-inning Kirsten for UConn against McClanahan, and then USF showing some late life in the bottom of the eighth, putting three on the scoreboard. The Kyle Phillips two-run home run, making it a ball game again. Yeah, in that second inning, uh, that's where all of the U UConn offense came into play. All six runs tonight for the Huskies came in that second. It started with the long ball, a solo shot off the bat of Isaac Feldstein. It was capped by the long ball as well. After Christian Fedko's RBI single added the second run of that inning, gotcha. there was a walk to Connor Moriarty, followed by another base on balls to the number nine man in the order, Anthony Nusserino, that loaded the bases against McClanahan and Anthony Anthony Prado delivered a grand slam to cap the six-run rally and give UConn a comfortable advantage in that second inning. And Kirsten, for Shane McClanahan, it seemed like in the first inning he was on his normal game like we had seen. He entered the ballgame 30 and two-thirds innings without giving up an earned run. The only pitcher in the country 
with that stat line, a zero ERA. But in that second, we just you just highlighted it. He just ran into some trouble, but then afterwards, pitched another two innings and only gave up one base runner after that. It, w- it was just an odd outing from him. Yeah, he really did a nice job of settling things down after that second inning. And it, in the third, he had to work around a one-out single, but that was it, and it retired the final five men he faced tonight. Both bullpens very impressive as well. We'll take one more break, come back and wrap things up for you from Tampa. Six to four, your final. UConn takes game one of this series against USF. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation. Others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us. The University of South Florida. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. Welcome back to Tampa, where UConn takes game one of a three-game series to open up conference play from USF 6-4. to four. Josh Appel, Kirsten Carbach with you. Now we're joined by UConn head coach Jim Penders. And coach, first off, congrats, congrats on the win. How big Thank of a you. win was this tonight against an arm like Shane McClanahan and a team that have been playing so well in USF just to open up conference play with a W like this well, on the road? Yeah, it was big. He's certainly one of the best pitchers in the country. And, you know, we thought we had one of the best pitchers in the country going tonight, too. So... Thought it'd be a heck of a matchup. Our uh, offense rose to the occasion. I thought even in the first inning we went one, two, three, but we extended some at bats, uh, fouled some pitches off, um, yep, and then we made them uncomfortable in the second inning. And you know Isaac Feldstein hits a three and two, uh, gets a three and two fastball and doesn't miss it. And and um, you know after that it was you know good at bat after good at bat. Laid off some tough pitches, had a couple walks in there. And Anthony Prado on a two and zero oh count, knowing that there's nowhere to put him, you know really got a hold of one. And Coach, you mentioned that premier matchup tonight, Shane McClanahan for USF, and you guys with Tim Cade on the hill. Coming off a bit of a tough outing his last time out, but not the case tonight. 11 strikeouts in five innings for the lefty Tim Cade in the start. What did you like from him this evening? Well, I really liked his fire. You know, for the first four innings, he looked like himself. The fifth inning fell off a little bit, um, but uh, that was good enough for tonight. He had not he had not given us that kind of um, uh energy that kind of competitiveness um you know consistently in four straight innings all year and and um, he was really exerting himself so i thought i thought that was enough that was something positive and then uh, jake wallace did a nice job bridging the gap but you know timmy was just letting it rip tonight he wasn't saving anything and i think in some of the past outings he's he's been battling some really tough elements when he has pitched he seems to get some terrible weather but um you know, he's he, he came out tonight and just let it go. And I said, hey, if we have you for four, if we have you for five, if we have you for three at your best, I'll take that. And then uh, he listened. He, he let it. He emptied the tank and uh, he was up around 100 pitches. That was enough. And and uh, this early in the season and, and figured we got a, a couple good arms that we could go with to, to close it out. You certainly did. Jacob Wallace and P.J. Poole are both exceptional out of the bullpen. Coach, thanks so much for your time and congratulations again on the win. Thanks very much. That's UConn head coach Jim Penders joining us here. And after a very entertaining game, we thought we would get a pitching matchup of two huge arms. Tim Kate, Shane McClanahan, we talked about it all night. Kate goes five innings, gets the win. McClanahan a bit uncharacteristic of an outing for him, and he takes the loss. P.J. Pohl, we mentioned Jacob Wallace, both effective out of the bullpen for the Huskies as well. And we're now joined in just a moment as well by Anthony Prado, He'll join us in just a second. He had that grand slam. You just heard him talk about that. 
in the second inning. And now we're joined by Anthony. And the question right off the bat, first off, thanks for joining us, Josh Appel, Kirsten Carbach up here with you. Thank you. The grand slam in that in the second inning, what was your approach going into that bat at, that at bat against a, a pitcher of the caliber of McClanahan? Um, I was just looking, looking to hit a good pitch, and uh, I've been struggling recently. So once he fell behind, I was just geared up, ready for a fastball, and I got it and put a good swing on it. For you guys as a team, we asked Coach Penders this, but from a player's perspective, you guys have – you're in the middle of a 20-game road stretch, basically. You had your home opener uh, canceled due to weather. But to open conference play on the road with a win like this, how big is that for your ball club? I mean, it's huge. But, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. We, we still have to win the series. I mean, get two or three and then play our house money Sunday. But, I mean, it's still, it's still big. Chills. Anthony, t take a drink of that. Congrats on the win. Celebrate. And congratulations to you guys. Thanks Thank so much you. for joining us. Thank you. That's Anthony Prado, UConn shortstop. Big grand slam in the second inning. Turned out to be the difference in this game. Well, for our entire crew here in Tampa, Kirsten Carbach, I'm Josh Appel. Once again, your final score, the UConn Huskies take one game one of conference play from USF by a final score of 6-4. to four. Thanks so much for joining us on the American Digital Network.